month in which you can just breathe a sigh of relief. The heat is dissipating. The garden is aging. At least a lot of it is. And the air just smells so much crisper. But one thing we will definitely miss this year are all those beautiful bouquets. I was able to make one just about every week. I made a new bouquet, or two or three. So how are we going to get all that beautiful color into the house when all the garden flowers are fading? Well, there are quite a few ways that you can do that. Bring those colorful flowers into your house to enjoy all the way through the winter. And we're going to do that by starting with our beautiful zinnia patch here. So by picking a few choice plants when they're nice and dry, and what I mean is um, not early in the morning when they have dew on them, or any moisture. I'm going to pick some of the peak flowers here. These zinnias make a beautiful bouquet, but instead I'm just going to dry them. So in the Victorian meaning of flowers book, the zinnia means absence or sorrow which doesn't seem like a very appropriate meaning for a flower this vibrant and bright and beautiful. But zinnias did not always look like this. When they were discovered by the conquistadors in the early 1500s in Mexico, they were actually a very dingy purple and a muddy, muddy yellow color. It was the gardeners and the botanists that brought them into this beautiful form that we have today. And I believe it was in 1920 that a botanist developed the Zinnia elegans, which is the dahlia-like Zinnia that you see here. So they've come a long way since they were discovered. Here we have a nice little handful of zinnias, and I'll be gathering a lot more than this because I'm going to want to dry a lot of flowers. So here on the work table you can see that I've gone out and collected quite a few lovely things out of the garden, and from the herb garden we've got some rosemary, which I think is probably my most favorite scent of all the herbs, aside from bay uh, basil, which I really love too. It's such a clean, wonderful scent, and cilantro. Here we have some sprigs of lavender leaves and we've got some lovely thyme, a bit of oregano. Now if I were going to do it, drying these for spices I would lay them flat or put them on a rack flat or put them on a, a pad of paper. But because I'm basically going to be using these for flower arrangements and dried wreaths, I'm probably going to hang them upside down to do the drying method. And here, beauty berries. I don't know how these will do because they might just all tumble off the, their little stems and roll onto the floor. We'll see. It's worth the experiment. And here, we've got a lot of sedum in the garden right now. This dries really well. I've got three colors. I've got white, I've got pink, and there's a rusty colored one coming up next. And we've got some garden sage, which smells so nice. And I love, this is why I keep them, because this will add interest to a wreath or an arrangement. And then we've got some lamb's ear, which dries very nicely. This is ironweed, just an old field weed, 
which I hope will retain some of that purple. And good old ragweed, everybody has that. That dries really well, so does goldenrod. And this will be a beautiful addition to a wreath or a flower arrangement. And this, these are the um, seed heads from the chaste bush. So there are all kinds of things you could go and collect in your garden right now. You can take them off the trees, you can take them out of the field. Just experiment with all sorts of things. Sunflower heads would be great. Um, a lot of these are going to dry uh, and turn brown. <laughs> Hopefully not, but I hope that most of them will turn out really nicely. It'll give it a nice subdued color. For example, the zinnias are not going to dry as bright as they are in the garden, but they will still have a tinge of color, and that is what we want, an old-fashioned uh, vintage look. So I have a few things here I want to experiment with drying for um, flowers for the winter, and I went out in the meadow and I've got some Joe Pie weed, and I was able to get some thistle. Really had to strip those little treacherous little leaves off of there because it's these little leaves that have the stickers on them, but if you just pull them on the edge, if you don't have any gloves on, you can just take that by the edge, the tip of the leaf, pull it off, and that's where all those little stickers are. But when you actually do strip it of those treacherous leaves, look at that beautiful, beautiful little flower. Now I'm not sure how these are going to dry. I know that other thistles dry very well. So I'm just going to do these the um, old-fashioned way by stringing them up, hanging them uh, from the ceiling in a cool, dry room. They say, uh, I mean, a uh, dark, <laughs> dark. I don't really have a dark room. I really don't. So I'll probably just hang them in here and see what happens. But, and then we had a lot of these that we figured out last spring when I did a bouquet with these were a member of the Bonisette family. They've got really nice little tight heads that are kind of a, I don't know, <laughs> grayish, grayish white, but they're, they're very pretty. And then these, oh my goodness, I have no idea. These might also be a wild flower, a member of the Bonisette family. So we'll see how these dry. I'm just going to gather these in bunches, strip as many leaves off as I can. Um, I want to leave a few. And we'll see if any of these are able to retain their color. I'm sure hoping that the thistles do. Aren't those gorgeous? Wow. I know they're ser seriously treacherous if you try to touch them. And farmers hate these because they really, really will ruin a, a farmer's field in no time, the way they spread. But I just found these growing wild. And then, of course, the ever-lovely Joe Pie right here, which has already lost a lot of its color. But, I mean, look at those huge things. So we'll see. I'm going to tie them up and see if I can get them to retain their color and do some winter flower arrangements. Stripped off most of the lower leaves. You're left with actually a very pretty flower. I think this would be great in some winter flower arrangements if it keeps some of its color. I also grabbed a handful of liriope just to see how it does. Now, they're already tumbling off the little stalks, so we um, may not have too much success with these, but I think we'll give it a try. So, um, with my twine, once again, so easy, you just take it, do this in really, really big bunches. You want to do them in rather small sizes so that they dry more evenly. Wrap your twine around as we've done before. So once again, you're just going to gather a small grouping of your herbs or your flowers. 
you're going to take a length of twine and wrap it tightly around the stems nice and tight and then tie it on the other end so that you have something to hang by hang it by I don't know why I'm bothering with these gloves they're really more in the way than anything else you may be wondering where I get this beautiful twine and the answer is that I make it myself um, I once bought some twine because it was beautiful colors it's called Nutscape I believe it was really expensive just because it was colors so I decided I would just make my own I bought about 5,000 yards of twine for around $12 at our local co-op and then the next time I had to dye sheep's wool I just dyed some twine to go along with it so I have several different colors of twine and the nice thing about it is you can you can dye it green so that when you're staking plants and tying say your sweet peas up on your fences and your trellises it the, the twine just disappears into the background but it's also great for doing the dried flowers if you've collected and tied all these bunches of herbs and flowers and weeds and grasses and seed pods, whatever else you could get your hands on, what are you going to do with them? Well, I'm going to show you what you're going to do with them, and it's really, really quite simple. But first I want to show you something special that I found yesterday. I thought I was finished gathering things, and then I went out and I found all these great <laughs> wisteria seed pods. I think these would be so, so interesting to use in some kind of an arrangement or a wreath. I certainly don't want them dropping on the ground and making more wisterias. But what I really wanted to show you here is this great find from my used bookstore in Knoxville where we were the other day. I came home with so many gardening books and if you love gardening books you will appreciate this. 75 cents most of these cost and they're all really good. But I thought that um, a lot of these would be great for doing some videos. For example, The Complete Book of Topiary for $1.50. Now, wouldn't it be fun during the winter to do some topiary projects? I'd love to do a topiary rabbit. Um, this would be so much fun. Let me know if that's of interest to you. This is a book about weeds, 75 cents. You know, you can learn to love the weed. It's much underrated. Uh, 50 Mile Bouquet. Mm, I think this is about flower growers. Um, this one is incredible. 100, 1,001 Hints and Tips for Your Garden for 25 cents. The Classic Garden. These are antique garden ideas um, all the way back to the 1600s and gardening advice and really vintage looking garden plans, things like that. I just love. This is a beautiful book too. And then I have 100 Old Roses, Antique Flowers, Annual, 75 cents, Gardening with Roses, 75 cents. The most I spent for any of them was $7, but this one was $6, and I think this is going to be such great fun. 1001 Old Time Garden Tips, and right away, as I was flipping through it, I found this bit of advice, which hit home because of my problem with the cabbage worms. This is from 1891, Cook the Cabbage Worm. Every worm visible upon the cabbages may be killed by the use of hot water at the temperature of 130 degrees Fahrenheit. The water may be boiling hot when put in the watering can, but it will not be too hot when it reaches the cabbage leaves. So I guess that's how you boil the cabbage worms. There's also some old-time advice here, old-time wisdom. Dining room etiquette. Should you find a worm or insect in your food, say nothing about it. 1891. I think in the, if you're in a restaurant, you better say something about it. And then there's this garden color guide. This was probably a $30 book, but I got it for $0.75. Cents. And what I love about it is that in the back, it's got all these flip pages here where you can co color coordinate your garden. And by flipping the page, it tells you 
exactly what you have here. Opium Danish flag. What would that look wonderful with? Oh my goodness. Mealy Sage Victoria it would. And then you can just combine all these wonderful flower arrangements in your gardens so that you can plan for next year. I just think this is a fantastic book and 75 cents. Amazing. So, and then there was one more that I thought was absolutely fantastic. Just a sec. I paid $7 for this and it's worth every penny and it's the book of herbs. It's got gardens, decorations, and recipes. And I think we will be using this a lot in the next videos because it just covers food, growing herbs, the 40 most important herbs you should grow in your garden. It's just got some beautiful ideas. Here we have drying flowers, just like we've been doing. And it's just a beautiful book. And I think we'll be able to find a lot of great ideas in here for future videos. So, that was a great find the other day, and I'm certainly glad I went into Knoxville. But back to our flower drying, and so here we go. This is a quaint way to dry your herbs and your flowers. These are old antique rakes, they're wooden rakes. They've got so many tines that there are, you can hang an awful lot of vegetation from these and you can still find things like this. So these are just mounted on the wall, there are two of them together and I'll be able to hang a lot of herbs from these. There's something so beautiful about seeing herbs and flowers drying in your house. And it smells nice too. I just think it's so pretty. I show you that I'm going to use to be drying a lot of these herbs and flowers is a Victorian contrivance trademarked in 1887. And it actually is a dryer, but it's a perfection clothes dryer. So this was the per cursor of the fold, fold out of clothes dryers that you see. I mean, I know my mother had one, but this came long before that. It's got very long tines on it. And it hangs on the wall. And the way it works is that you pull it up and lock it in place, lock it in place like so, and then you wing out all the tines and you just pull the twines apart like a wing, opens up like a wing. And you can hang from all of those lovely long posts. Excuse the ceiling. This is the garden room. And once again, as I said, we, we aren't going to finish the ceiling until winter comes. But it's really a really cool item. I just love this. I love bouquets, but you know what? This is just as pretty. Too bad the walls aren't painted still, <laughs> completely painted, and the ceiling isn't done. Oh well, it doesn't really take away from the beauty of these drying flowers. Now we'll just see if they retain their color, especially being in front of a window. They may not do it as well as if they were in a dark room, which is really where they should be. And I will put a few in a dark room just to see if it makes that much of a difference. But if they can retain even a portion of the, those colors, I think it'll be absolutely wonderful to be using these in the winter. I 
This is the thistle. Um, it's been drying for about a week. And you can see that it's really retained its color. It's shrunk quite a bit. It's not as full as it was. And these zinnias have been drying for about four days. These were the drumstick alliums that I dried on the porch after they had bloomed. I picked them a little late and therefore they really didn't have any color when I actually picked them, but I picked them more for the form than the color. But this um, particular project has really given me new ideas on how to plant my garden next year because I think we're going to be concentrating a lot more on everlastings such as status and straw flowers and those are the seeds that I'm going to be buying and putting into the garden next year so that we can have some really really great color and flowers that we can preserve without actually having to dry them. So we'll be talking about that in the future. In the meantime, from Hoplong Hollow, this is Cherry. Go outside and pick some flowers and some weeds and some pods, some acorns, whatever you can find for projects over the winter.